good evening and welcome uh, to Beacon Space tonight with myself, Xavier Stortus, and my wonderful co-host. Okay, uh, Lupus, you there? All right, it looks like we might be having some technical issues. Um, the, we're not, pr production, we're not having... Oh, okay. Production's telling me that, in fact, I'm actually on my own for today's show, as uh, Lupus is be reporting signs of a infection, uh, which is a strange excuse, given that's the same thing I heard for the reason we're missing a report from Chaz Gusto Prime or even Trey Grin this month. There must be something going around the news reporting business, and I'm sure I'm next, so... Um, Apparently, we're going to have to make sure we have a very quick and uh, clean lore stream today. In uh, more exciting news, though, we do have a, uh, a natural engagement doctrine announcement from the Children of the Vein, and a continuing saga of internal memos from the Agamemnon Syndicate that are being made public by an unknown actor. It in this one includes an update on their project, Anaziti. Back in Commonwealth space, uh, in the planet of Iderast, the Assembly has uh, completed its election, and the Aetherlings have completed a major election victory. For more on the story, we'll see what the ACNC has for us later in this broadcast. Lastly, filling in for Lupus's normal dramatic retelling of the assault on a uh, unknown station by Tahora Fai Explorers, I'll be giving you the latest we've been able to piece together via the Backhole Transmission Network. That'll be the news for the show. And now, um, how about a brief word? This is a TELUS travel alert. The 0909 center system is controlled void space of the children of the vein. Travel permits are required for entry. Violators may be subject to fines, legal action, and use of force. Contact your local children of the vein embassy for details. This is a TELUS travel alert. The 0909 center system is... Um, Alright, it looks like our um, advertising there was interrupted by a, an emergency transmission broadcast from the uh, TELUS authorities. Uh, apparently there is a new travel advisory out for the region. Um, please make sure you paid all appropriate dues and taxes uh, before entering the system. Don't know what that's about, but... Um, Looks like that just means we don't have any advertiser for this time. I hope we're still getting paid, and, um... Wow, someone should have told me the, uh, the lower third is wrong now, isn't it? Well, I'll get to, get to fixing that as, um... I welcome everyone in to Beacon Space's, uh, first combo lore stream and, uh... Faction turn stream that we've, uh, had to do, um just the way scheduling worked out this month um but you know it's a it'll still be a good show with this double header uh, unfortunately as was uh, referenced in the cold open uh, Lubus Kalbrek is unfortunately under the weather today so um he will not be able to join us for the show uh wish him all the best and hope he uh, recovers uh, very quickly and uh we'll probably be planning uh, uh to make up for that with some other lore things that we the two of us may have done at this lore stream they will instead be showing up in the lore stream later this month um when we get to the uh lore stream 22. uh so with that though let's go ahead and jump right into the news i almost said jump into the fact faction turn that's not for another 30 minutes so oh, geez um Getting ahead of myself already. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this um, natural engagement doctrine that's been provided to us from the Children of the Vein. So, I'll put it over here, and I'll uh, read it out for everyone as well. This is a natural engagement doctrine. As this most glorious age of spring enters into its 21st cycle, we behold a sector where peace, progress, and prosperity reign. Thus, in acknowledgement and respect to our fellows in the interstellar community of Beacon Space, we of the Children of the Vein wish to take a momentous step forward with all the peoples of this great sector into a brighter tomorrow by putting the old ways of war and violence behind us in order to embrace a more civilized future by pledging to uphold the Natural Engagement Doctrine. Henceforth, the Children of the Vein shall not take the first instigating hostile actions against any rival 
apologies of the sector without prior notice, ample warning, and declaration. Any such conflict in which the children of the vein engages as the instigating aggressor with the rival polity shall first have limited scope and rules of engagement for the conflict communicated and discussed with the target of such aggression well in advance of any aggressive actions, granting time for said polity to plan and respond accordingly. No such notice or offerings will be granted to untargeted defensive partners. Any instigating hostile action from an opposed polity targeting the children of the vein that offers to reflect this process in full in the event of an instigating act of aggression against the children of the vein, utilizing prior notice with ample warning, scope, and rules of engagement, shall be granted respect through reciprocating efforts to establish limited scope and rules of engagement in any retaliatory actions. Lastly, any such polity that engages in instigating hostilities against the children of the vein without the following process described above may not receive any guarantee of limited scope or engagement. The aggressor may thus be subject to any manner or decree of, or degree of retaliatory effort with it without limitation. Please contact the children of vein through official diplomatic channels for further clarity as needed. Um sounds like an interesting announcement from the children of the vein. I feel like I said the word um uh, like, what was that, uh, limited scope, uh, quite a few times, um, and a whole bunch of other words. Uh, but, uh, it does seem as if you have any questions, you can reach out to the diplomats on, uh, the TTGI station, uh, for more information. That is a very interesting announcement coming out of the Children of the Vein. We'd like to thank them for their contribution to this month's lore stream, as we'll move right along to the Agamala Syndicate. As I mentioned earlier, this is an internal memorandum that was recovered from uh, some portion of the Syndicate, which seems to be written to the members and affiliated patrons of the group, and it is from the leaders of the Agamala Syndicate over the subject of continuing endeavors and uh, new horizons. As part of our continuing efforts under Project Anaziti, the Syndicate is pleased to announce that after some slight delays, an agreement has been at last been brought to completion with the leadership of Planet L, newly christened El Arpon. El Arpon rejoins the sector with eager, eager curiosity, having been separated from the sector at large for, for some time as a result of technological degradation caused by the planet's corrosive atmosphere. However, tensions in their homeworld are high, um, owing to many locals questioning why neighboring world Calypso did not come to their assistance. Representatives from Calypso have not yet responded to these concerns, but rest assured the Agamal Syndicate is working tirelessly to resolve the situation. Closer to home, many lodges are on the lookout for new recruits to join their ranks, in part to fill positions in an inter-system reconnaissance teams who are always in need of additional hands to assist in tracking down far-roaming queries. Interested parties are invited to contact their local syndicate representative for more inf information. I uh, do wonder what those uh, lodges need more assistance in inter-system reconnaissance teams for. Um, and it is interesting that this internal memorandum makes no note of the current progress, or perhaps lack thereof, of the Syndicate on their current quarry. Well, in the meantime, the uh, all of us here at uh, the News Network will continue to try to retrieve these internal memorandums for you for all months going forward. I'd like to thank the Algoma Syndicate for their contribution to this lore stream as normal. And as we move right along to our next guest, we can take a look at some content from the Assembled Commonwealth. And this is the ACNC's reporting on victory for the break for the Aetherling, some breaking news. I'll be reading out this report here for you all now. As news of the Aetherling's election victory was announced, scenes of jubilation within the Aetherling's campaign headquarters erupted. With a majority of over 80% of the vote, the campaign delivered a victory more outstanding than many had predicted. Soon after news of victories for Arwen Giddings and Thomas Pascow and their elections followed, both had described themselves as political allies of the Aetherling in their campaign. Arwen Giddings narrowly beat her opponent with 52% of the vote, while Thomas Pascal achieved a stronger majority with 
The Aether Lang de delivered a victory speech on the steps of the Verdant Palace to a, to a large crowd of supporters and citizens of Bjorgen. Dutifully, the Aether Lang thanked her opponent for an honorable race and praised the officials for organizing a well-run election. The Aether Lang described her success as, a stagger stagger as, quote, a staggering victory, which no one can deny. The accusations of illegitimacy on my seat in the assembly have been quashed time and time again. This is a victory for our democracy, end quote. The Aetherling continued with, quote, Let this be a unifying moment for Bjorgen. No longer can the will of the city-state citizens be denied. The momentum has shifted. The people have spoken, not only here in Bjorgen, but in Koritas and Peleus. Those who share my vision for the Commonwealth have shared in my victory today. I call upon those in the Assembly who have stood idly by to join me and my allies. Join us to unify the Commonwealth once more. The people demand strength. They cry out for more opportunities and a reach that is ever expanding. For too long, our citizens' voices have been ignored. As your representative, I promise to be your voice. The Aetherling concluded their speech by saying, quote, The Commonwealth has long claimed it stood for decency, honor, and devotion to the common good, but I say it is time for us to stand by those claims, not only so our citizens prosper, but so the whole of Beacon Space can flourish. End quote. The Aetherling's opponent, Rocco of House Manza, declined to comment on his loss, only saying, quote, I respect the will of Bjorgen and congratulate the Aetherling on her victory. End quote. Sources within the anti Sinwen bloc of the Assembly have described the total loss of morale and willingness to continue in Alpha position. Meanwhile, some prominent opponents are even considering publicly announcing their support for the Aetherling and acknowledge and an acknowledgement of her legitimacy. It is clear that with this win, the Aetherling has secured her own position and even strengthened her bloc's control over the assembly. It only remains to see what the Aetherling's plan for her newfound power and influence is, and how this will alter the Commonwealth going forward. As an out-of-character note, the Commonwealth players would like to thank everyone who took part in the election and appreciated their help um, in the final act of the faction quest, including participating in the voting, as well as the fulfillment of this arc in the story of Sinwen and the Commonwealth. They hope that you enjoyed what stories came out of the quest and look forward to providing more lore and interesting actions as the turns continue. Valu Fortune Assembly. We'd uh, like to thank the Assembled Commonwealth for their wonderful um, lore notes and these uh, graphics for breaking news from the uh, Assembled Commonwealth news um, company have been very cool to see. Uh, that wraps up the Assembled Commonwealth's news for today. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that victory for the Aetherling shapes the actions of the Commonwealth going forward and what uh, that implies for their ever-increasing expansion into nearby sectors. In our final faction report for today, we bring you the latest installment of the story of the Tahora Faiz exploration into an unknown station. Let's uh, check in with the ongoing story, where we're told another onslaught of automated defenders have charged forward out of the dark. The crew of the Ranzo have, hold, have held their ground and continue to delve further into the depths of the station. With each new wave of attacks, a pattern cements itself, a warning call, a scout or two attempting an ambush, and then the wave of bodies that peters out after a few minutes. Repeating like clockwork, the attacks gain less and less momentum as the crew masters its nature and rhythm of the station. Fighting on, an advanced team makes it to the central chamber where sealed blast doors await. Expecting another wave of attacks, the crew take up defensive positions looking out to the hallways behind them, but at the last moment, Nurberg shouts towards the door. With only moments to spare, the team repositions just as the sealed doors open violently to re reveal a hidden wave of station defenders. Thanks to Nurberg, the wave is readily dispatched before the blast doors close. Alige holds the drawers ajar long enough for the crew to slip by before it slams shut. In the dark, cavernous room ahead, the strange cathedral-like nature of the space leaves the crew feeling a little bit uneasy. 
Lighting a brilliant green flare, the room comes into focus as eldritch symbols fill the walls of this chamber, appearing to direct, to direct the effects of the bleed into a concentrated area directly in front of the organic reproduction pods. Similar technology to that used on Heliocytus, but from an era that is long thought lost to time. Inside these pods, new defenders begin to rapidly grow. Looking around for a moment before staring at the pods again, Beamish simply states, Yep, we're going to need to turn that off. And that is the end of the ongoing report for the Tahara Faiz exploration into this unknown station. Uh, it does seem like they've almost resolved their uh, predicament, only time will tell to see if next month results in a successful deactivation or maybe something different entirely what uh what will we see as they continue their exploration well perhaps we'll find out later today during the faction turn all right uh that wraps wraps up all of our different uh faction reports for this lore, lore stream uh we're through them a, a little faster than normal uh, but missing a co-anchor to riff back and forth between does make uh, improvisation between these bits a little bit harder to pull off. Um, we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and reserve a uh, special report that I've been working on for, uh, for other lore news uh, for the next lore stream when Calbrecht is back to joining us so that we're able to, to riff on that report together. Um, as well as, I believe, Kubrick was planning to make an announcement regarding the um, Free Agents campaign, but we're going to be resolving, uh, reserving that again for uh, perhaps a special broadcast or uh, just the next lore stream, depending on when it takes place. So, a uh, little bit of a shorter lore stream today. Hopefully nobody minds too much, um, as we're sort of saving some of these other lore bits uh, for another month. But uh, it does make sense to go ahead and, as we did, get through all of these wonderful faction announcements that I'm very appreciative that uh, all of these factions have continued to create for us. With that, though, I think uh, I'm going to take a brief two or three minute break so that I can reconfigure my screen to uh, have the stuff I need for the faction turn in front of me rather than the lore stream. And um, we'll be right back with uh, a continuing, continuing story. Um, ironically, though, I don't actually have a be right back screen because I've never needed one. So we're just going back to the intro screen and I'll see you all in about two minutes. Uh, I'll go ahead and set up a, uh, a timer so that that can scroll for us. But thanks everyone for joining us for Lorestream 21. Hold on just a moment and uh, we'll be back with the faction turn. Thank you. 